Annesley breaks down and Dripstone High School passes them. The Dripstone now head out into a storm. Megan, coming into Alice Springs, you were about an hour ahead of Dripstone High School. Now they're ahead of you. What happened? Well, we had a few problems coming in. We had a lot of problems with the weather today. It's been very cloudy, and that blocks the sun getting through, of course. But when we came into Alice Springs, we blew a motor controller. Um, we're fixing that tonight, but because of that problem, um, Dripstone has got ahead of us. But we're still hoping to start off tomorrow, and we'll be continue to go well. <laughs> It should be very exciting, Megan, because I think there'll be four cars on the starting line. I know, line. I know. It's just going to be like the start of the race again. They'll be all ready to go and they'll probably be passing each other all day, but I really love it. It's great. At 8.30 this morning, the Honda Dream crossed the finishing line, completing the race in 35 hours, 38 minutes, beating the General Motors record by 10 hours. Honda averaged 85 kilometers per hour. Second was Beale. Only 25 minutes separated Kyocera, Wasida and Aurora. All five cars broke the original record set by General Motors in 1987. Dripstone soaks up the morning sun. Rory, last night the storm came in. Tell us about how that affected you. Well, it, it almost caught us unawares. We'd had good sunshine for that last little run into, into Alice Springs. Coming out of Alice Springs, we came through Heavy Tree Gap, turned right at the airport, and suddenly there was this dust storm racing towards us. And uh, within a matter of minutes, uh, we had to call the convoy to a screaming halt, quickly load the car into the trailer. And despite that, we still got hit by it. We uh, suffered some damage to the panel because of the rapid change in temperature. But other than that, the car will be up and running again tomorrow. Now, clearly Dripstone haven't entered expecting to beat Honda. Why is it Dripstone participates in the World Solar Challenge? Well, the school always has fostered the concept that education goes beyond the classroom walls. And through a variety of programs, of which one is the Solar Car Project, we provide uh, real educational learning opportunities for our students. Kia Motors, Solar Flair and Annesley College leave the Alice Springs media stop together. Solar Flare passes Annesley on the outskirts of Alice Springs. General Motors Holden Automotive are supporting two Australian universities and four Australian schools in this World Solar Challenge, as well as being one of the main sponsors of the race. Up ahead, Oklahoma University runs through the desert alone. Cadney Homestead Media Stop. The media have left, but the cars keep on coming through. The officials time them and send them on their way. Five, four, three, two, one, go. The Monash Melbourne vehicle stops for the night, 78 kilometres north of Cooper Pedy. Nine cars reach the finishing line on day six. Toyota, NTU, Cal Poly, George Washington, BPAL, Michigan, Nissan, Cal State LA and Stanford. Only minutes separate some of these cars.
Mark, Honda arrived in Adelaide yesterday. They averaged around 86 kilometres per hour for the entire trip. What do you think that says about the importance of aerodynamics? Yeah. Well, you can, you can do the numbers. Uh, once you get up to uh, even medium speeds, uh, aerodynamics is uh, just about everything. The rolling resistance, the percentage rolling resistance drops. Uh, it's very important. I think we might have come to that as far as we can go with this car. So, if you participate in another, what do you think you've learned from this event? Well, we can, we can see about the, how we perform this time. They've got the reliability up, the electrical systems are up. Uh, just the, the mechanical performance of the car, all the mechanical systems of the car have been uh, have performed excellently. Uh, I think it's just about all transferred straight across to a, a new body design. So you would want to take better advantage of the aerodynamics that others have uh, been using? Uh, well, I, think, uh, I think we have to. There's a reason why all Formula One cars are the same shape. On the morning of day seven, Monash Melbourne's solution heads south through Cooper Pedy. This event has seen 94% efficiency at the rear wheel. If we transfer the technology from these cars into ordinary cars and, and make hybrids, we could probably have a rear wheel efficiency around 34 to 38% instead of the now less than 20% efficiency at the rear wheel. So it's time to transfer technology from the event into today's type motor cars. So the event has made a positive contribution to engineering in general? Uh, the, the event has made more than a positive contribution to engineering. It, it has proven that engineering is what the world's all about and engineers know how to solve problems. So to me it, it is the, the whole event establishes that engineering is what it's all about and it is absolute proof of that give the problem to a bunch of engineers and they will solve it. At 3.46 p.m. on day seven, Solar Kiwi crosses the finish line, followed by Sunjoy 21 minutes later. During day eight, Sofix is the only car to cross the line. On day nine, the first car to finish is Tokai with an average speed of 40.5 kilometers per hour. Next to arrive is Monash Melbourne. Having finished the race, the car is weighed, the battery seals are inspected, and team photographs are taken. Next in is Asaya's laughing son, followed by the Mino family, Oklahoma and the Danish car Solven Denmark. On the tenth day, a Shire reached the line. Then Dripstone. Pandasun. Solar Flare. Kia Motors. Alaris and the Annesley College. It's a magnificent victory and we congratulate you. Yeah, thank you very much.